Hello, I am Aaron and you are watching The Printosaurus. Today we are going to work on an Orange Storm Giga. We are going to make it a little bit better. We're going to do it with Sunlu's newest engineering filament, PA6CF, which is a carbon fiber reinforced nylon filament, offers high strength, high temp resistance, and it prints really, really good. We're going to test out this filament. I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to show you the mount setup that I made for our Orange Storm Giga, which gets it up off the ground. Not a big fan of the stock setup. I don't like things on the ground, easy to trip on. Uh, if you've got animals, dirt, dust, all that good stuff can get in the way. So we're going to lift it up and I'm going to tell you all about it. Let's get into it. So before we jump into our Orange Storm Giga project, I want to talk about basic specs and recommendations for this filament, PA6CF by Sunlu, their newest engineering filament. Uh, PA6CF 270 by 290 for nozzle temperature Celsius, um, 50 to 70 degrees Celsius for your bed temperature. You can anneal this filament, which will achieve its maximum heat resistance, uh, 130 degrees Celsius on the high end and as low as 80 degrees Celsius uh, for temperatures there. Five to 12 hours is what they recommend to achieve that heat resistance. And they recommend using glue as an adhesion promotion when you are printing. So that covers the basic specs of this filament. There is one last thing. Um, with this being a nylon filament, it is hydroscopic, which means it's going to take on water. 80 degrees Celsius for 24 hours is what Sunlu recommends. And we need to find a filament dryer. Wow, it worked. We have our filament dryer here. Uh, mine only goes up to 70 C. So um, I'm gonna let it go for 24 hours. That worked really well. Uh, still was able to get all the moisture out and didn't have any issues printing. So in it goes. And I'll see you guys in 24 hours. All right, welcome back to day two of this project. Our filament is dry, it is ready to go. I'll show you how we start printing with that here in a second. Let's talk Orange Storm Giga in the project that I'm using the PA6 carbon fiber for. So I mentioned having my Orange Storm Giga spools on the floor. And the reason why is because I frequently use these five kg spools. And in order to use those, you have to use the floor mount. And with my situation, the standard setup, uh, this mounts to the back, this is the spool holder, and here's the runout sensor. This mounts to the back of the unit and you would mount your 1kg, 3kg spools to the side here, just like this, and you'd be good to go. And then if you wanted to use the 5kg spool, you would just put the tray down behind and run your filament up and through. So my printer is in a corner, I couldn't do that. So I printed a bracket a while ago and mounted my spool holder to the side and then I just more exclusively used this tray. And that worked for a little while and then I noticed that there was dirt, dust, and uh, the kids or myself or the dog, whoever, somehow uh, would step on it or step in it and it would cause an issue. So I really wanted to get this up off the ground and I wanted to make a more polished setup altogether. So I did a couple of things there. First thing I did was I ditched the standard or stock uh, runout sensor and I printed one, uh, went online, found a design for one that mounts off the tool head. It is a micro switch uh, with a ball bearing and it works just like this one does in terms of filament runout sensor. Um, so by doing that, that eliminates the need to having to mount the standard runoff sensor and it gave me the flexibility to make whatever I wanted on top of the Orange Storm Giga. So that is today's project. We are going to make something that mounts on top of the Orange Storm Giga using the PA6 uh, carbon fiber. I feel like it's a great material for this. Oh, recently, I did a box turtle uh, for my Voron back here. And if you're not familiar with the box turtle, uh, it is a multi-material system and it has these trays that mount in 2020 extrusion as part of the frame. And then your spool sits in the tray and there's a feeder on the front and that's how it feeds the filament. It's very clean. 
It's a, a neat mounting system, a great way to do it. And I thought, hey, I wonder if I could adapt that to work on the Orange Storm Giga. So GCO Gearhead had a tray that had a PTFE tube port on the front instead of the feeder setup that the box turtle had, and it was the perfect starter. I had to make a few adjustments. Uh, this was designed for 2020 extrusion, which means there's a six millimeter gap. So where it fits into the extrusion is a six millimeter by six millimeter uh, setup. For 3030 extrusion, it is eight millimeters. So I simply put this in Bamboo Studio, made a modifier, a block that I put on each tab on each side and increased the size to eight millimeters. Very simple. If you're doing quick work, modifiers are a great way to do that. Um, I will have these files down below and uh, props to G-Code Gearhead. Fantastic setup. I'm actually gonna use that setup on the SV08, which is what his was designed for. So you guys have been waiting a long time to start printing. I have a CryoGrip Pro build plate here that I'm gonna use. I'm going to use my X1C. What I like to do to prep this is make sure your build plate is nice and clean and then grab a glue stick and I will run that up and down. If you're printing with ABS, ASA, PA or PC, uh, especially, I like to just use an adhesion promoter uh, regardless of the build plate I use. Uh, it's kind of like added insurance for me and things have always turned out really nice when it comes to first layer and things like that. So let's get this loaded up. Uh, with hydroscopic filaments, you want to use a filament dryer when you're printing and I aim for a relative humidity level of 10%. It just keeps things nice and I uh, prints turn out great. Um, let's talk print settings. So 275 for my nozzle temperature, 7 degrees Celsius for my bed temp. Um, I did mention I use an adhesion promoter, which uh, helps significantly with keeping things nice and flat. I used a Bamboo Labs profile for PA6 uh, carbon fiber, and they had it set to 200 for the outer wall and 300 for the inner, for your infill uh, for uh, speed. Uh, I bumped it down to 160 and uh, 250, and that seemed to just really uh, make a very, very nice um, overall print. So I'll show you close-ups of that. Um, and that's it. I mean, uh, PA6 carbon fiber by Sun Lu, it printed really well. It printed a lot better than some other stuff I've used. Um, just really off the bat, I dried it, put it in, did some test prints before I did this video and things turned out great. So uh, I think you're going to be very happy with that filament. Um, so I it is assembly time and we can wrap up this project. So you're gonna have to buy a couple of things and I will call them out as we put this thing together. First up, 3030 extrusion. This is a 1200 millimeter section of extrusion. I got it on Amazon, the links down below to where I purchase things. We need to cut this to 45 and three quarters of an inch and then print some 90 degree brackets that we're going to attach to each side. And then we're going to throw this on the Orange Storm Giga like so. All right, so we have our 3030 extrusion. We have it in place and I have it just loosely in place. Uh, you'll be able to slide this back and forth. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our tray and we have these tongues on each side of our tray. And you'll see here, they slide in the extrusion slot and they would just hold in place. So either front or back, you can mount this uh, in the front if you want to, or you can mount it in the back. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna put mine in the back for now. Uh, but all you have to do is you take your tray and figure out where you want it on your extrusion, slide it in place. You will be able to move this back and forth. It will slide in the slot. Um, and you mount however many trays you printed. I printed three. I printed two of the same size and then one larger. And you just put them in place, whichever way you wanna do it. Okay, so now you have those in place. So the next thing you can do is you just take this extrusion and we just kinda tap it and line it up so that everything fits in that slot. And once you've got this securely in place, what you can do is take your, your spool rollers, put them in with those 608 bearings. These I just printed out of PETG, nothing crazy. Um, you could do TPU if you wanted a little bit of grip, it really doesn't matter. 
I haven't noticed any difference with grip or anything. Uh, so once those are in place, I'll show you how this works. So we have our five kg spool right here, and this is what I wanted to get up off the ground. So I have these in place. This just mounts just like that. And let's turn this around. So that is mounted in place. And you run a PTFE tube up through the port. And then now you can take your filament, run it down through and down to your print head. And that uh, filament sensor, uh, the run out sensor is now mounted on the tool head, uh, which means you can move this around wherever you want. You don't have to worry about any wires for the uh, filament sensor or anything like that, which gives you the ultimate flexibility to put this on the front, the back. Uh, you could even put it on the side if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. And uh, yeah, so now I can get my 5K spools up. If I don't want to use a 5KG spool, I can use on the tray that I made a little bit wider, I can use a 3KG. And if I want a 1KG, I can use one of the smaller ones. I also designed this so if you printed more uh, spool things, you could, you could put it over here if you wanted to. Um, you could utilize both if you wanted to. All right, so the last thing that we need to talk about is the tool head and that filament sensor that I mounted on the tool head. So the filament sensor, the print files are down below. You will need a micro switch and you'll need a ball bearing for it. Uh, those are also down below. I got those also on Amazon. And as far as wiring, you can repurpose your existing filament sensor wire. You can just splice them together, solder them and extend the length. Uh, there's plenty of wire to do that. And I routed it through the cable chain and routed it down through around the stepper motor, continued through the chain. And you can see here where it comes out on the other side. It goes up through uh, the Z-axis chain and then down and plugs into the location of the stock filament sensor. And if you're looking at it this way, your far left is your signal cable, your ground is in the middle, and then the right of that three pin connector would be your five volt power. You're gonna use the signal and the ground. So that is it. Uh, this wraps up our project. Uh, hopefully you find some value in this video. I wanted to get my five kg spools up off the ground instead of having a tray mounted system. And I wanted to move the filament sensor, the run out sensor to the tool head. Uh, just to make things a little bit easier and add some flexibility in mounting things. So overall, I achieved the objective that I was going for. And uh, like I said, hopefully you guys uh, find some value in this video. Let me know if you try out this mod. Let me know what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear from everybody. Please like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching The Prince of Source. I'm Aaron. See you guys.